Let's carry on with the file from our previous example, and let's take a look at manufacturing methods. Inside of our generative design study, we have three available manufacturing methods. We can choose one, all, or any combination of them, but it's important that we understand what this means. The unrestricted will not constrain geometry based on any preconceived manufacturing method. So I like to use the unrestricted method in this specific case because it gives us the most organic looking geometry. For additive, we have two criteria that we need to focus on, the overhang angle and the minimum thickness. The minimum thickness is a little bit easier to understand and really comes down to the process that you're using, the scale of your parts, and how that geometry is supported. The overhang angle can be a little bit more difficult to understand, but essentially it's looking at what your specific printer or manufacturing method can do in terms of unsupported geometry. So it'll use this as a design criteria, and anytime it exceeds that, it'll add support material on the specific design. This is not taking into account any on-model support that your manufacturing method would take into account, such as FDM printing. So keep in mind that these are restrictions that will be placed while it's calculating the design. For milling, we have multiple configurations that we can add. We can have three and five axis configurations, and then we can dictate the tool direction. For example, on a three axis machine, we could set it to only be from the minus Z angle. So this tells us that the, the tool is only from one orientation, and then we dictate the tool's parameters. Uh, the tool diameter will uh, affect, obviously, the size of the final geometry. The shoulder length will affect how deep that tool can actually get into the part. And then the head diameter is going to affect basically a keep out region or an avoidance region for that tool. So that way there's no collision with the geometry. So when we're taking a look at manufacturing using a CNC mill, whether it's three or five axis, it needs to have all the information such as the direction that the tools can come from. And if you want to include all six of those as well as tool parameters. One thing that's very important to keep in mind that traditionally when you set up a CNC milling part, you're dealing with the tool orientation being in the Z axis. However, if we look at our part, Z is actually the axis of the wheels themselves, the direction that the motorcycle is traveling. So keep that in mind that as we start to plan these things out, if we're looking at uh, the tool direction, we'd be looking at minus Y for a traditional milling setup on this part. For our design, I'm only going to look at unrestricted as the manufacturing method. And this, again, will give me a more freeform organic shape without any restrictions to the process. But it is extremely important that we understand those manufacturing processes and how they will affect the outcomes. Once we've made this change, let's go ahead and save our file so we can move on to the next step.